in this episode of Unpacked. So you guys are literally heirs to taxi thrones. Focus on your car, they give you the car in the morning to go work. Focus on that, ensure you bring it back home, ensure there's money. That's rule number one. But you're always fighting us drivers on the road. Like, why? <sighs> you guys... Aren't you fighting us? No! And it's like, how? But I ask you, like, we're looking at each other, I'm like... And then you're still like... I've never had... I've never. <laughs> you're still like... <laughs> In South Africa, we collectively have very strong feelings about taxi drivers, so we thought, why don't we bring them here? Here are their stories, let's unpack. Kayale Tumavuso is a sports management graduate from the south of Johannesburg. Having left the world of sports, he found a new passion in the food and beverage industry. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, he lost his job, leading him to yet another path working as a taxi driver. Temba Klindi has been working as a taxi driver for almost a decade. Having grown up in a family that has a taxi business, he got familiar with the industry very early in life. After several stints in business, Temba eventually found himself going back to the family business and has managed to build a life for himself and family in it. These are their stories, let's unpack. Jens, Ka, Temba, <laughs> Kaya, how are you doing? Thank you so much for coming through. Ah, thank you for having us. Let me start off by saying, you know, just as a disclaimer, I don't have good experience with taxi drivers, taxi associates, the whole lot, nah. But we just want to understand, Jorge, how things work. So let me start with you, Temba. What was your upbringing like? And when you were growing up, what did you want to do with your life? Well... I mean, personally, uh, my dad owns a couple of taxis, so So my upbringing, I've been exposed to the business. I was the one collecting the money. I was the one collecting later on. So it was never something I wanted to do. It was something ekona ekai. But I always wanted to be a pilot. Maybe take the business to greater heights. I want because, well, it's transport at the end, mm. but a greater height because Baba Mbega years I learned from Mukula Mbega. So it never really intrigued me, per se, but... Did you want to be a pilot of the road or a pilot of the sky? <laughs> of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> pilot of the sky. Of a com- but due to the cost of a commercial pilot's license, mm. I sort of like derailed and just sort of found my way at taxi because mm. ju- after high school, two years later, I mean, I was like, I was like, and then Baba Wata, in fact, na was like, Humble sevens, at least now Zokonu was mellow being dot. So in, in those two years, because I mean, this is the, the story for many people in our yeah. country, we know. You finish uh, matric yes. and many can't afford tertiary education or they choose to not go for tertiary yeah. education. What were you spending your two years doing? Like what were, in those two years, what were you doing on a day-to-day basis? Well, the first year I upgraded my matric results and then I just let that go. Then the second year... I told the caravel, and then that sort of bored me because it might be in I was sort of breaking even. Mm. So it was doing transport for small kids. For, for yeah. small kids, I was sort of breaking mm. even in Motbechali. So ah, sort of just let that go. And then as Shali and Shekai, just roaming around trying to find myself, and mm. nothing ever prospered from that until he's again a taxi. And then where was home at the time? No, I'm calling the way to Mina Yes. Mm. And for, for your side, when you were growing up, what did you want to do or be when you, when you got older? Uh, growing up, it was a matter of like a soft life, mm. and middle class household. Not suburbs. Su- suburbs, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I was, I was very much into sports, like mm. deep within. So played uh, professional, no, not professional, like it's uh, Easterns and then it would be club and then it was Joma Cosmos and all that stuff. And then I got my knee injury. Mm. So after that, it was like school. School was like, in the I never knew it mm. after high school. Mm. So my dad was like, my boy, just do your studies and that's it. And your dad at the time was actually a teacher? Yes, he was a mm. teacher. He's been teaching for 35 years. Mm. He only recently was retired mm. two years ago, last year, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, and then 
went to school, finished high school, then went to varsity, did sports management, then worked for Mamelodi Sundowns, and then pay wasn't enough. And I was like, nah, guys, it's not covering my traveling cost from Brackenhurst all the way to um, PTA. Mm. And then I was like, nah. And then so what were you doing for Mamelodi Sundowns? I was a, I was a youth coach. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And then after that, and then I resigned and then I went to work in the waiting industry, mm. like at a bar and restaurant. And then from there on, became a waiter and then became a bartender. Learned that and then became a professional bartender. Mm. And then work, COVID shut down. Mm. And then I was like, I, what now? Chilled, chilled, chilled. And then my dad's like, I'm a boy, come through. Basically, they, that's why I was like, we laughing. It's like basically the same as like, Come through. Yeah, so same situations, except the difference is you grew up yeah. knowing mm. the, the business, yeah. and in your side, Baba always. got into the business post retirement. No, he, he's always been in the business. Oh, okay. Like he was a teacher and was an owner. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, he yes. started from while he was still schooling himself. Mm. So, me knowing it and being in it was like after varsity. Yes. Yeah, like thing of I know my dad has taxis, but then to see them, to work on them, it was never a thing. Mm. Yeah. So it, what was your perception of the taxi business prior to actually getting into it? I, I, I wasn't really into it. Mm. Like I didn't have a thought. It was like, I know this is going to be mine, so I must just like follow what he does and then life continues. Mm. But now when you're in it, now you're like, there's so many variables that you need to understand people getting paid, your cop breaking down, paying this, paying that. So it's like, it's, it's a lot. Mm. So it's for, for my father to go through that and still be a teacher at that time, I was like, my guy, you're mm. a champ. Mm, mm. Mm. And I mean, um, I don't think the teaching profession pays that well. So I'm sure mm. the taxi business was supplementing the yeah, life yeah, that yeah. it afforded you. Yes, yes, it was. And you... I'm sure now you have a newfound appreciation for that. Uh, very much so. Mm. So it's the thing of like when you see like e, a new e cab engine, you're like, damn, one day mm. I'm going to own one. Mm. Mm. So it's like even, even, even if you're done for the day and then you see them parked, yes. you're like, this is a beautiful sight. Yes. <laughs> it, it really is. Just parked in one night, you're like, yeah. So you guys are literally heirs to taxi thrones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are taxi princes, kings to be. We wouldn't necessarily yeah. say that, but like it's, it's always like a good thing to keep your head down yeah. because as much as you are fortunate enough to be brought up in that environment, not many people appreciate that or want that. Mm. So like, as, as an example, let's say he works for my father or mm. I work for him. Mm. Yeah. And then it's like, what is this kid doing here? He knows nothing about the business. Ugh. He just got it. He just got here because of his dad. Yes. So I just, I just hope something happens to him. Mm. Type of vibe. Mm. So some, people will appreciate you, others won't. But then it's just a matter of like you following into your father's footsteps, listening to him, doing what mm. you have to do, and then you're good. Mm. Mm. So um, Temba, with you, your dad said, "Azwagala, seeing yeah. as you're doing nothing." Come through. Come through, yeah. Was it something that you were excited about or you like, I don't want to drive, I want to count money? You know, well, from high school, I always knew should things fail, I always had something to fall back on. Yeah. So it was a case of good, okay, well, maybe it's a prophecy come through or something, but I always knew good, should things fail, I have taxes to, to fall back on. So when you call me, I was like, ah, oh, well, I guess it's time. It's time for me to maybe understand the business and get, well, Understand the things from working in it, not from observing good buyers about driver. I'm there when he's meeting new drivers, mm. Magabakosha, all the interactions, I'm there. But thing yours of me now, on my own, first-hand experience, Kuti, what are they really complaining about? Then maybe I can come and translate those problems to my father. Mm. So mm. when I started, I thought, ah, the money, as long as there's money, I get to buy airtime. Because as long as you get to buy airtime, you smokes if you smoke, and then... That 200, 300 that you have in your pocket, it makes you feel something. Because most of the time, or I will not need most of the time. Because it doesn't mean good more corner, my takes again, you will cheese boy automatically. Mm. There's a lot of things that happen behind the back that people don't know about. Mm. So it takes you, I go to Nemali per se. Corner, one of the Nemali, and my takes in, and then I'm going to You're just surviving. Mm. And may, maybe then that's the question I must ask because 
there's this perception, Jorge, if but to, but taxi bosses, yeah. we even think government is afraid of taxi no. bosses. There's certain laws that will never pass because mm. taxi bosses are bigger than our president. You know, <laughs> like that's that's the perception. So, what would you say um, is different about you know your father, for example, as a taxi boss? Well, he's a guy who could in the too. Um, so he started the whole thing. Mm. But he has to raise a family, he has to buy a house. And most of the time, takes a one, that pretty much becomes impossible if there's no other income in the ING. Because mm. if it takes you one, so let's say I go and buy a taxi. Now, I don't have any savings. So I'll have to go get a loan. Mm. Or if I have savings, it's like 20,000 that I have. I'll go to SA Taxi. SA Taxi uh, gives me a car. In your paleo motor, like 14,000 to 16,000 installment per month. Mm. At that point, I'm making about between 500 and 700 a day. Mm. So if you do the maths, I'm not even making installments. Mm. So it's about not a lot of money. We don't have money per se, unless mm. if you've paid off the taxes and you've amounted like 10 or 15, then there we can say, good, yeah, we're mad. Mm. But most of these taxes, they're still under finance. And the prices they pay, they're way too much. So there's not really much profit for the owner. So what mm. was one, got the second one. And then from there, he went on to a professional job. He lost that job. Then he came back as a Kalela Pants, as a Sevens. And then that's how I grew up. So for me, I think Kumut Begalibila Zama just to make ends meet, to just be exposed to extreme poverty. Yes, yes. Just to make ends sense. meet. Then, ngaga manja my taxi, so. Mm, mm. Oh. And your, your dad, as a taxi boss, what would you say he is like versus this perception? Uh, he's, he's, he's a soft man. Soft, humble, quiet, right? Mm. He, because of him growing up and being a teacher and what he studies, he understands people and their, their, their logic and the level of reasoning because he has to deal with kids. Mm. So I could basically say, in a sense, Guti, if he were to speak to you, he's going to take you as with the mindset of a child. Mm. Yeah, well, so he, him, he, he, he likes to avoid conflict. Mm. If, there's, if, there's an issue, if there's an issue dispute of like a route or amongst owners or amongst drivers and owners, mm. then it's like, guys, be like, sort out the issue. Mm. Don't just disregard our drivers mm. because they are the reason we are here. Mm. Without them, who are we? We sometimes imagine that the taxi industry behind the scenes is like some kind of mafia. <laughs> we hear of killings, you know what I mean? Yeah. So... Does it exist in some spaces, in some areas? Yes, it does exist. I mean, you read the newspapers, you'll be lying if you say, no, it doesn't no. exist. It is there. Mm. But it's not something that we can particularly control mm. or would like to interfere because mm. so I still have a baby to raise. Yes. Yeah, so, no. does, does that make you scared? Being aware of how rough the business can be? Not, not necessarily. Because it just, it just depends on you, per se, as the person. Mm. So if me coming, me recently coming to my, the, the tax industry under my father, I'm not going to be that person of, like, calling shots. Guys, do this, do this, do this. It should be like this. Now I'm telling our chairman what to do and how to do it. And then it's like I'm basically setting a target on my back, saying, Lo, I'll mm. cool mm. He's going to think he's going to tell us stuff. And then it's like, sometimes it happens, ne? But then also, when, it, when it's on the basis of shootings and whatnot, that's beyond the, the owners as well as the drivers because mm. those, that's, that's, that's on another level. We have nothing to do with that. Mm. Mm. The owners have nothing to do with that. It's just a thing of you'll wake up one day, hey, you guys can go here now. It's like, how? What Why? And you don't know. And you don't know. Now it's like, go. And then there's also a thing of I, I patrol. Every association have, has its own patrol. So those guys you listen to, you can't be like, no. If, if I come to you and like, sis, mm. you can't say no. 
You have to. I've said no to the <laughs> no. control <laughs> and association. But, like, <laughs> but like those are the people that you yeah. work with all the time. So it's like, take your car, humble shall appear, and it's like, how? Oh, why? Just do it. And then you go there. Now you don't know what's going on. And then you end up doing it and it's like, ah, then smooth sailings from there. So what are some of the rules that they told you you need to be aware of before you get started? Sure. What else? Always stick your, stay in your car, mind your own business. Mm. Don't interfere with other people's cars. Don't meddle with other people's businesses. Like focus on your car. They gave you the car in the morning to go work. Focus on that, ensure you bring it back home, ensure there's money. That's rule number one. When you start meddling in things, that's when it gets complicated. Mm. So stick to yourself, like we raise you, Guti. Don't be outspoken, don't want to be seen that you're the boss's child, no. Mm. So actually the other drivers don't know you're the boss's they child? They do. Oh, they do? Yeah, they okay. do. Okay. They do, because most of the time, well, for me, Mukula Guamabo driver used to interchange one game about Puma and hire this one, fire that one. So they knew me from Mukula and then Whenever there's a breakdown, I was always there with my father, helping him to fix the cars. So I was sort of exposed to them. So they sort of knew me from there. And then, then they see the cards. Because normally, motor they have uh, the name of the owner written on the passenger door and the driver's door. So mm. then they ask you, are you Tindy's son? They're like, yeah. Like, oh, OK, the boss is like, yeah, well, it is what it is. Mm. And then, yeah, so that's how. The word goes around, oh, that's the boss's son. But you don't get extra treatment or yeah. extra attention because it's the streets. Yeah. You're all here to hustle. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And on your side, what were some of the do's and don'ts that you got told? Uh, with, with how I went about it, it's like basically high school. Mm. They're, they're, it's like there are rules in every place. Mm. So no fighting, number one. Amongst us, no fighting. Stay in your car, mind your own business. Uh, always, always have your 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 associates back mm. in terms of defusing the situation. Mm. Not like if, if he were to come in conflict with someone else, I'm not going to be like, mm. it's a thing of like, bro, relax, relax what's going on? Mm. Whoa, before anything. So those, those are the things. And it's, always, it's also a thing of like punishment. Mm. Um, there's fines in terms of like money that you must pay. Mm. Uh, also, uh, what else? Suspension. Mm. as well. So, Which yeah. means you don't make money when you get to Meaning the... you stay at home. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then if you want to work, that means you have to go elsewhere. Yes. To work until your suspension is over, then you can come back. So what could get you suspended? Something like what? F fighting. I was, I was this close into getting suspended once upon a time. But dead is the boss. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't play like that. <laughs> Honestly, like, as, as we said, like, regardless of who you are, yeah. rules are rules. You're mm. not above the rules. Mm. If, if me being the owner's son, I get into a fight. Dude, it's even worse. It's even worse now. Yeah. Now it's a thing of like, yeah, we own alone. Mm. Now you're an example now to your father. Mm. Would see, I, if they can do this to my son, mm. where am I? Where but am you I? guys confuse me because you say the rule is stay in your own lane, don't mind your business, don't fight. But you're always fighting us drivers on the road. Like, why? <sighs> Aren't you, guys, aren't you fighting us? No! <laughs> aren't you fighting First us? Off, you want to cut me off in the road without indicating why. Just imagine this. In a taxi, I carry 15 people. Yes. In a load. Yeah. Just imagine if you had to stop and let 15 cars mm -hmm. in front of you. Mm -hmm. That's like another five minutes of waiting time. Mm -hmm. So one taxi with 15 people is saving time. For who? For the for them. No, guys, no. Okay, let me tell you what my issue is. Yeah. I do sometimes give way if I'm not in a hurry. Okay. Because I understand, Jorge, uh, you know, much as I'm fortunate, I was, you know, able to buy myself a car early on. So I've never had to really use taxis much. Okay. But from the experience I had being in taxis is, the passengers will, will tell you where to, ask you to stop at certain places. Random, so, not certain, random places. Yes, mm. random places. Yeah. Or you might be in the fast lane and then suddenly you need to cut through. My issue is the lack of communication. That's my issue. This, admit you do it. You stop <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Okay, on, 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 my, on my say, what I can say for myself is that I will communicate, ne? What? How? How? In indicators. Guys, and then that's also, if your indicators are working. Also, also, ne? It's a thing I'm going to see. I've been indicating, ne? And then 
I, like, let's say the, the ballet is traffic. Mm. So I want to go on to <laughs> the yellow lane now. Yes. Ne? Now it's the thing of like, I'm indicating and then you see me and then you're still pressing me. And it's like, how? But I ask, I like, we're looking at each other. I'm like, and then you're still like, I've never had, I've never, <laughs> still like, I'm I've, gonna never, ignore him. I've never had a taxi driver say, please to you. Uh, Can I tell you, uh, me, I, I've seen signs uh, that are just saying, I'm going. Yeah, to me, like, this is, I'm going. It's not, Can I please have, yeah, they just are like, I'm going and they go. You must understand that it's, I'm carrying 15 passengers and those things are very unstable. So I can't really take my hands off the steering wheel, please. At least uh, one hand. Like, work with us, guys. Work with us. Okay. Literally, our line of work is time is literally money. Okay, what, what's your quota? Because I know you're also chasing X amount at yes. the end of the day. So how does the quota thing work? It, it depends on the you and the owner. And the yes. route that you and work. And the route that you work. So for, for, for us, well, for me, it's like 600, 550. If you had a horrible a day. day yeah. yeah, a day. If you had a horrible day, no excuses. Mm. It's 500 rand. And then, does your salary depend on what you made for the day? Yeah. You don't have a... No, it's not no, fixed. It's, we, it's different. It's different. Yeah, people work different. Yeah. So for, 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 for Ifemiye too, being like my father's workers mm. or employees, he, we have a fixed pay. Mm. Okay? So we also have a mechanic in, in, in who, who choose a driver as well. So he gets a higher pay because he fixes the cars. Mm. So regardless, if you had a horrible day, it's not going to... Uh, impact on your pay, mm-hmm. nah, but then don't make it a norm. It's not. It's not an everyday excuse. Yeah. Hey hey, body, Hey hey, patrol. Hey hey, this. Now it's like my guy, you playing. Mm-hmm. You playing. So if I'm making a minimum amount for you guys, and then you're not coming to it, nah, or reaching that to- that target, you playing games. Mm-hmm. What are you doing for the past what twelve hours? Because mm-hmm. you literally you wake up in the morning four o'clock. Uh, by half four, quarter to five, you with people mm. until six, seven, or eight. And then depending on if you have staffs or not. Uh, you now have to work depending, you earn depending on how much uh, you've, you've accumulated. So how we work is Imoto Nemoto has a budget or a target mm. for the week. So let's say the target is 3,000. Mm. That's what I want from good drivers. Oh, okay, my dad so it's a weekly three, target. Yeah, my yeah. dad wants 3,000 for a particular car, 2.5 for that, 4,000 for that one. Mm. So if you do not reach the target, it's understandable if we're going to strike and then Valley Strata and then it's a whole... Who's just, bad? Because the strikes are made by you. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I live in Soweto and electricity is a the problem there. So there's yeah. constant blockages where people protesting because of electricity. Yes. So there, my debt becomes a bit lenient. But if there's nothing and it's a normal day and everyone is working, no and excuses. then he, he compares to the other taxis, which, okay, if one, two, and three can bring the 500, where now? What were you doing? He mm. 100 rand yam. Mm. And then... I understand. So that's how he, he keeps the drivers on their feet because on our side, he constant or fixed pay doesn't work. Because the driver has got a mag pay living twenty thousand ram lam, so I check it two hundred ram lam, check it three hundred. So for you guys, it's a good incentive for the drivers. Yeah, it's a good incentive for the yeah. drivers. Yeah, yeah. Um, why do you fight with passengers about change? We don't have float in the morning. It's exactly. It's not a convenience store that we keep floating as tray in La Paya. So why don't you guys, okay, if you know ne, about needing cash, why does your day not start with like some change okay. in the car? Can, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. If you know you're going to go to work in a taxi, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> why so, don't... So, sometimes a person doesn't have change. And some like, okay, I have staff that work for me. And they will sometimes ask me, you know, your coupon to take a change or whatever the case may be, or when you pay me, please make sure there's a 20 or 20, or whatever the case mm. may be. And then sometimes you'll even go to the garage and they don't have change. So what must can happen? In with my experience, I've had a person, well, the, the load that I had, it was 200 rand, three, 100 rand, 100 rand, 100 rand. Mm. And I'm like, where am I going to get change? Mm. So I took my, my loads amount. And I'm like, Nisa's born. You figure out how you yeah. split your change. Yeah. I was like, and then after that, then you start hearing. 
and it's like, oh, oh. Come on, man. <laughs> so this whole time, while I'm driving, like from where I picked you guys up, ne, to let's say now I'm gonna hit the freeway. Yes. And do do this whole time, everybody was quiet. I'm busy. Um, now, now when I when I got to the point, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Take my take my money. Nisa's uh, born. Two minutes. Sorry. Now. Everybody is fine. It's like, why? Do you fight with the person who counts the money? No. No. He's so, trying to help you. So yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's not their duty to count the money, yeah. but it's like they, it's they, they, they are helping hand. So many people have stories of how they never want to have to count money because when there's problems, it falls on them. Mm. So where does that come from? Uh, for for me, I with, with how I deal with a person sitting in France, ne? Mm. If they let's say we fully lay line in, ne? Mm. With a earring again, basically, mm. and then you'll get now I'm short to one. Mm. France is full you. Now long to long mile. They're like no again. I was like mm mm mm. I'm full bali mal. Yes. And I was like no. This the only puti. Again, I'm just bali. When I just tell me how much, how much, how much. Even if you put it down, hundred rand, mm. two fifty rand, two whatever, mm. ne? And I'll sort it out. Mm. So that that's how I I I, I deal with my people. Mm. But if you're gonna come in like it takes like a call, ne? Let's say there's like five people. You're gonna come in, sit to the front seat, earphones. Me, I sent you back. I'm like, no, get out. We're go to the back. What's the Why? purpose of you coming here? Ah. <laughs> it, it really doesn't make sense. Good, so you're gonna sit, come in, and then you're gonna like just headphones and you chill like this. So he must be there ready to work. For yeah, ready, re ready to assist. Not work for me. Assist. Because you don't want to pay him for counting money. <laughs> no, you should give him a percentage for counting money. No. But it's also a thing of like, they should also give us a tip for getting you to work. Ah! But guys, okay, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest and realistic. The inflation rate ne? Yeah. and the increasing transport rates, because we know when petrol goes up, roots, yeah, roots go up. Yeah. I get that. But you are aware that some people spend an exorbitant amount of money on taxis. Yes, most definitely. Yes. You, you get that, right? Yeah. We also spend an exorbitant amount of, on petrol. Yes. On average, a taxi goes through about 20 liters of yes. petrol. So yes. that's about 400 rand a day yes, on yes. petrol. So we also spend a lot just to get you guys to work safely, mm. effectively, and fast enough so that you're late and you don't have problems with your buses. Do you pay e-tolls? No. We were supposed to be exempted from that. Yeah. We, why? Do you see why I said taxi buses are... No, but, but also, <laughs> I, I just feel like as the, there are some things that are for us and the others that are against us. Okay, what's for you? What's for us is the, the, the easy way of like going around routes. Mm -hmm. ne? In terms of like if there's, if there's like a roadblock or a um, no, ne, metro. Mm. We can hit a, a yellow lane ne? and then when, when they stop us, like, ah, timer. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. I've but left no, all but those guys, people at the let's bag. Let's be honest, yellow lanes are for emergencies. It's so, an emergency. It's an no, emergency. guys, a paramedic going to save someone's life is an emergency. How is you dropping people off to meet your quota an emergency? If, if I don't get you to work on time, yes. you lose your job, I have less of a customer. Okay, so okay, so let's say you are on the yellow lane okay. because it's what yours do. Yes. <laughs> When you see an ambulance, what do you do? You swim to the right. Okay, so you give them yeah, yeah. the move. Because you understand that it's full, it's an emergency mm. lane. This so, is life or death. So, yeah. so do you, taxis qualify as emergency? I'd yes. like to believe so. No, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you also take chances on the road? Like, I'll give it's you an example. Chances, it's calculated risks. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> you take calculated <laughs> risks yeah. on the road. Yes. It's calculated. Everything is calculated. Have you seen a driver maneuver from the fast lane to the yellow lane and back again? Yes. Yes. Mm. It's effortless. It's it's time to the T. And worse, probably we don't affect anything that's happening at, at the back. back. Where now? Nah. With your 4x4, four four, try doing that. Everyone is stepping on their brakes. Traffic is backing up. It's a mess. But do you have advanced driver's license to be taking calculated risks? 
you 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 learn it as I'll you go. take that as a no. Is that a no? <laughs> <laughs> it costs a lot to go and drive a Mercedes and it acts differently compared to a quantum. So it pretty much for if there was advanced driving for a taxi, if Toyota offered That's advanced the business that I'm giving you guys. <laughs> Create the business for advanced drivers you know, for, for, for quantum. Those Me, things are not stable. Have you seen it? They're not built like good for just the wind itself. The can. wind itself throws yes. it off balance. Yeah. Yeah. So just imagine side skirting and doing skits on the wet surface in a quantum. But you guys terrifying. do it anyways. Yeah, but it's terrifying. You guys, guys. Okay, are they, uh, let me ask you, Temba, have you ever met a female taxi driver? Yes, they are. Do they work for your dad? No, no, no. no. They're Just out there? Out there. They are few and far, like Ken's teeth. Mm. Few and far between. And what is the, the attitude towards the female taxi drivers? It's from us drivers, it's okay. You see them as our equals, they're working, we're doing the same job that we're doing, but it's more the passengers that have a problem with it, because immediately when they step in, oh, oh mama, we are driving, oh, I'm going to go to the house, oh, I'm going to go to the house, I'm going to go to the house. So it's more the passengers that have a problem when women are driving, as opposed to the drivers themselves. Mm. So to us, they are our equals, they're doing the same job. I mean, they drive as good as us, so mm. why would you have a problem with them? Mm. Does your dad have any female taxi drivers? Uh, no, I haven't uh, met any female driver mm. for, for, for where I work. Um, besides, like, seeing that the transport, other than that, for a woman to be in our line of work where I work, mm. no, I haven't. It's mm. just a matter of um, u mama and u owner because the, maybe the husband has passed away or he's mm. sick or the kids are just helping her out. But yeah. So much as I'm grilling you guys about the things that annoy us, um, you know, we've heard some amazing stories of taxi drivers like helping to deliver a baby and those kind of things. Have you ever found yourself in an emergency where you had to do something heroic or risk your life? I don't think we risk our lives every day on being on the road. <laughs> but yeah. You also risk our lives, just mm. putting it out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's... Not, not, not something extravagant like delivering a baby, but look, figures who go get clinic, you tell them a pill is like on time, mom born a guti achulu, I mean, because in a low blood or something, mm -hmm. then you stop, they take out in my lakum, take a snack, yan and a coach, and go see, I actually, I mean, I think that's heroic enough for me, as opposed mm -hmm. to my saying your phone, you're delivering, and I'm not qualified. Mm -hmm. But if I miss things up there, then what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've had my um, a scenario where Umkul had an epileptic attack wow. or fit. Yeah. So literally, as I got my load, and then I'm leaving, and then he just started like shaking and having a, a seizure. Mm. So I had to like, I, I was wondering what's going on, because people are like, complaining to me, drive, drive, I'm cool, I'm cool. I'm like, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then as I turn around, he's up like this, and I'm like, oh no. You realize what's happening. Yeah, I realize what's happening. And then I had to pull over, and then I called one of um, the other drivers that I know that, Mm. And then it's the thing of you know who. Mm. So the closest person I called, please come take my load. Mm. They came, they took the load, and I had to drive and go to the clinic. And the worst, I wouldn't say the worst part is that for me, it's work. I need work, but then I couldn't leave this old man. Mm. So I had to wait with him or wait. Uh, with him in the in the clinic while they're busy with him. And it's like, we're busy with his phone. I'm calling his family members. I'm asking what's going on, what's going on. Now it's like, Uzban Ban, Then I call that person, I get a call. Now he's sitting for like two, three hours with this old man. Because like, for, for me personally, I can't leave you mm. and say to him, like, mm. unattended to. And it's like, what does it say about me? Yeah. It's like, I done my job, you're in the hospital or clinic, I'm out. Yeah. Then, then who's going to find you? Yeah. Mm. Look, and I think it's important for us to be able to humanize um, you. You have your, and why we wanted to have this conversation, you mm. have your own personal stories and journeys. Um, you also know what people think about you. Yeah. And you have your quota. You just got to do your yeah. job and get on with it. Um, are there any misconceptions or myths that people have about you that actually annoy you or ones that you've heard that sound crazy? The, the one that I can say, like your basic stereotype is, you don't look like a taxi driver. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> like, especially if you can express yourself in English. Yeah. yeah they don't think, how? Oh. 
Oh, okay. guys, I went to high school. Like, I, po- like I finished <laughs> everything. Yeah. So it's a thing of like, when you, okay, like it, it happens time to time, you, you meet a girl. Mm. Well, no, no. You talk, <laughs> like you talk to them now. Let's say emo eh? yeah. You loading up, and then you talk to hey, what's up? You good? And the, you guys are flowing. Everything is mm. going well. Exchange of numbers, shafere, and then she gets into the cab, and then now you get inside, and you're like, how? You just hear how? And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, how? I wish you would give me text. I'm like, so mm-hmm. you don't look like a driver. We in Ufun come up brand routine, his pants are none like no man. Yes, and those sandals. And those yeah. sandals. <laughs> I know you sandals. own a pair. No, no, I don't. No, I see there. I don't. I don't. I don't. Like in the Vazama brand wood, Nama Hembela with the Fabianis and all these things. No, no, no. Normal jeans, t shirts, standard procedure. Do people also get surprised with you? Yeah, they do. I mean, most of the most of something I can go to, how you can speak English. Yeah, I can speak English, but I choose not to. Or I'd rather express myself in his school. Mm. So like, oh, what's the calling Muslim? But like, yeah. And then it's like, oh, sure, 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 But uh, the females, like, I mean, are from wearing sevens are corn. I think uh, there's no, I want Tombazana appreciate guys because they know what they go through. They know what they have. And I think in my experience, okay, we're humble, I sent in. You'll see Guma office park because we're born in Quantum La Papans, Ichekil in Dombas and the Seventh Apparati inside those offices. Mm-hmm. So, from where I come from, I go to be respected, we're seen as heroes, but we're also humans mm-hmm. at the end, which we are able to provide for the Your families, oh, we are yeah. able to take kids to school. So, mm-hmm. there's not much stigma from my side. So, when you're in your own private cars, what annoys you about taxi drivers? Because sometimes you're not a taxi driver, you're just <laughs> yourself. Um, I wouldn't say I'm annoyed. Nah. It's a matter of like, I understand. Yeah. But you're annoyed. <laughs> no, not annoyed. No, no, no. Not annoyed. When not they annoyed. cut you off, no, it's you're like, also like, ha. But it, it is like, ha. But then it's like, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, no, do your thing. But, but like, you see it coming. I mean, if you, you literally see, you see it, it coming, you okay, now I'm going to your comb. Then you're born and I take it. Automatically, this guy's going to want to <laughs> cut, in front, cut in front of me. Just, so you slow down, mm. then you swerve the other way. And then you will even have that person saying, Sure, I'm fair. Sure, thank you. And he's like, But when you're born, you're not like, hey, now I'm not like, oh, sure, then you're a prick, then you pass and get them for what you want. So for us, I think it's the same thing now. Even in our private cars, we're still a taxi driver. Because it's what we do every day. So what, so what I can say is that, on my case, it's, it's, it was bad ne, for me uh, well, to do this. So it's the thing of, and then, like, you know, there are different routes that different cars take. Yeah. Ne? So I see people who buy, buy it down. Ne? And then I see one of the other cars that we don't work with. And then I see my association's car. Mm. Ne? It's coming behind me. And then I drove, next to the, I drove next to the taxi. So we couldn't pull in. Whenever he accelerated, I accelerated, he stopped, he stopped. <laughs> until my, one of my guys came and picked up these people. So you blocked? Yeah. So what do you call umpampisile, basically. And then when, when, we, when I got to the rank, because I had to meet up with my father there, because I was driving his car, and then the guy was like, ah, I'm not going to see you. I'm like, I'm not going to see you. So okay. it happened. So. Okay, okay. So what, what would we be surprised to know about the business in general? There's no money. There's no, no money. No, there's, no, not, no. there's no money. Like, there's yeah. no, we're literally fighting for scraps, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're literally fighting for scraps. I mean, Imali is in the production of the cars, is in petrol, is in the financing true, of the true. cars. We're only fighting for the small pieces at the end of the whole chain. So you guys are at the bottom of the food We're chain. at the bottom of the food chain. That's why you see there's wars and everything. We're literally fighting for scraps. I mean, Manga Jela good Ut driver makes more profit than the owner of the car. You wouldn't believe me. Mm. Ut driver, Manga Zohola, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 for four weeks, that's 4,000. Mm. And then, Ut for seven, Zega, every day, Uzo Puma, na 200. That's an additional 1,000 a week, 1,000, 1,000, 8,000. Me, Naikaya, Imoto, Ia figure is only 500. Mm. That's 10,000 mm. in a month. Installments and motor is 12,000. We're already short 2,000. Mm. Who has money? The driver is opposed to yeah. the, owner. the owner. So there's no money. We're literally fighting for scraps. Even if we were to, like, we have a garage, we are making the cars, we are making the parts, we are 
is sound we are their own by associations then there there's money mm. but less yenza it's just scrapped honestly but either way even if you make the sound and the money by association it's the associations money it's the associations yeah. money so who fits where in the taxi business industry like you've got the patrol guys the association you've got the taxi owners or the bosses like how does it all work so it's like when It's like starting a party. If I take it back yeah. till now, it's like starting a party. Whether you're going to have that one person with an idea or with a plan, and then once they they get momentum and they get people behind them, then it's like they're the presidents of that party. Yes. And then it's like, okay, you're going to take care of this, you're going to take care of this, you're going to take care Is of this. Is that now an association? Yeah. That, that's yeah. when it has it has come to to birth. Yes. Yeah? And then it's like, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. And then from there on, now because... We are here now. We need to protect what's ours. Mm. You all need to pay a certain amount, like a fee, like a route fee. Yes. Ne, to for us to keep this route open. Mm. And then that's what you do. And then go in the way patrol. But wait, who decided on the routes? Um, Communication, government, basically. Yeah. Government. Uh, I think back in our seventies or forties or sixties, somewhere there. But uh, government, they had to sit right, sit down. Mm. with the various associations that were self-formed and then just to call for to regulate the whole business and then they were allocated routes that's why there's this operating permit and operating mm. license for what do you work on this specific route should you be found outside of your route and then there are consequences to that that's how our patrols come into the picture so are consequences of working different routes are they like legal consequences or like Mafia consequences. It's legal consequences because you're... With crazy. mafia side It's things. not mafia, it's taxi <laughs> boss. <laughs> Within the structure. Because the office, the association is like an office. There's a structure, there's a chairman, there's a vice, there's VPs, mm. there's driver training, there's everything. So it's a proper structure. Yes. It's a proper structure. So our patrols are there to monitor, Gucci, the drivers are working... With the it. prescribed route, then there are no pirate taxis coming in. Mm. So that's how that's how you were stopped. Mohambanye Motoyako, that video you posted. That's how you were stopped because they thought you were a pirate taxi. How? How does? Oh, let's be honest, guys. Every let's taxi. be real. <laughs> let's just have a moment here. It takes in a taxi as a sticker that uh, identifies which I'm. So from. when you see, right? Yes. A taxi vehicle. Yes. It's not. There's no that South African flag sticker. Yeah. There's nothing. It's a minibus. It's a minibus. Yeah. And you see a family inside. Why do you still f- with a woman that it looks like me driving? Why would you still want to stop them? It's not that I'm condoning it, but it's what they do. Yes. It's to ensure that there's no pirate taxis operating on yes. our route. Yes. So normally what people should do, I was to catch a minibus and go on a specific trip which mm. is Ojula, like in Namatex con. You ought to write a contact the association mm. where you're going to pass and tell them good on such and such a day I and my family are going to move along this route we are from Johannesburg we're going to Durban Guys, K53 didn't mention this so I understand that's the street law but yeah, we rec- we acknowledge that that's yeah. not a legal requirement It's it's not a legal requirement. It's but just it's to there. make your life easier. easier. easier yes. Yeah, but it's there due to the fact that police do not stop the patrols yeah. when they are conducting their duties. So it's there somewhere in the law. Don't know where. No, it's not. It's, a, it's, it's in the mafia law where the no, cops are scared no. of the patrol <laughs> association guys. No. Okay. Okay. So I think I I, I get the picture mm. and I get the part of there's so many misconceptions. Yes. You guys being shouting taxi drivers, do you look down on or have a certain view of like taxi drivers in KZN or how, how the the industry is different in different regions? No, no. You see, it's all the same. It's, it's, it's all the it's same. The same thing. Mm. The same amount of people that he's taking is so it's, it's the same amount of people that I'm taking from James Dean. Mm. Whether however he drives, however I drive, and at the end of the day, the goal, still, is, the the same. goal is the same. Mm-hmm. So I can't be like, hey, I'm going to drive alone. What does that say about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. In terms of career ambitions, where would you like to see yourself in the next five, ten years? Well, I don't have any what post uh, high school qualifications. So I think I'm more into the business side of things. So I've started a few companies, like a company, a car restoration company. I convert containers 
into residential and everything. So I think I'm going to pursue more of that mm. rather than the taxi because it's there, it's given. Anytime I want to go back, I can just always hop onto mm. a taxi and drive. Mm. So yeah, that's me. And on your side? Funny enough, I actually just want to, I want to be a police officer. What? <laughs> yeah, whether it's SAPS or Metro. W when did that seed it, get planted in it's, your mind? It's, it's been a passionate interest, mm. nah, but then now when sport was like the main thing, mm. and then it's like, damn, these, these guys look good in a uniform. Yes. I think I could also look good in one. Yes. And then I did, you know that, I mean, what's your grade 12? And it's like that career week or something yes, like that. Yes. And then I actually went under my friend's aunt. Mm. And I'm like, damn, this is, this is, I like action. So you would, would you want to be like a detective, the one that's like trying to investigate I'd, the big cases? I'd, 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 I'd most definitely want to be in the task force. Mm. That's where it's like, hey, right, guys, we can't handle the situation. Tell Why don't you want to be writing tickets? No, man. I, <laughs> it's tedious. It's, it's like, it's so boring. And then literally, then it meets the, the like, you, as your job description, you're not doing what you're supposed to do because when you're writing tickets, obviously, you'd be like, ah. You know, yeah. But then now... You'd be stopping and say, hello, Mr. Officer. Will, and then, so for me, having, having that, like, that action or braveness in me, would see, I want to do this. I, I, this is what I want to do. I want to actually be within my job description. Would see, I got you. I'm a police officer, so I want to protect and serve. If as much as so what's, they, what's stopping you from starting and just? It's, it's a matter of my posts. Okay. So you wait, you apply, dololo. You wait again, you ask around, you Sorry. apply, dololo. And then it's a thing of like, hey, kulmanos banbani, we are guye, and it's like, eman jendo tutini, and it's like, oh, <laughs> my guy, come on. <laughs> so it, 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 that, that's what I've gotten into. Yeah. So as much as I don't like them on the road because I'm a driver, it's like, mm. ah, these guys. Are the same way that I don't like you yeah. on the road because I'm a driver. Because like, as you're driving, you see them and it's like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> and then now it's like, nah, I'm going to be there one day. Okay. So it's, it's, it's like that for me. Guys, I've had so much fun talking to you. I think that um, there's a whole side to this business that we don't know and understand. Um, I do hope, if anything, your stories go to bettering relationships between passengers and drivers, yeah. between other drivers and taxi drivers, <laughs> and also just, you know, that you are able to reach a point where you are um, reaching those career ambitions, you know, yeah. for you to go be in the task force. I know Unakhanne... The Rock, Fast and Furious, <laughs> and you know, for your side with your businesses as well, uh, that you just uh, are able to make a success of it all. Thank you so much for coming through. Oh, thank, thank you for you. having us. Hashtag unpacked with Rilebukhile. Maybe you watched this episode and you thought to yourself, you know what? I get it now. Give the taxi driver away. Let him go in front of you. And to the passengers as well, do you see how you frustrate the drivers? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked, we take a look at some of this season's most memorable moments. I'm also a human being. I'm not a rabba. Mm. <laughs> you know? Oh. Sorry. They'd come to me and say, but how can this woman be one, a Sangoma? There was a guy with the gun against Numbusu's face. I literally felt like I'm no longer a woman. much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.